Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Lisa and in this video I'm going to be speaking about how I've completed this frog from start to finish. In the description below I'll put a list of the paper and pencils that I've used including the colour of the pan pastels. If you'd like to see any of my previous work you can check me out on Insta or if for any of my products or original pieces you can check me out on Etsy as well. And for anyone that does purchase an original do get a little surprise with their order as well. For any frog fans out there, you can check out my previous piece that I've completed on a frog as well. And I also have cards on Etsy available of the frog as well. So before we get started, I just wanted to explain about the background and the colors that I've picked. So I went through and picked all of these amazing colors. On the right hand side is all of the pan pastels. And on the left hand side is all of the Faber-Castell polychromos pencils that I picked. I did go through and start doing my background but I didn't use all of the colors so I'll let you know in the description below which ones I didn't use but yeah this is the list that I sort of created to start with. So this is actually the first background that I've ever done with pan pastels by myself. I did do one previously but that was in a tutorial and I was getting a bit of help along the way. So. For this one it was something that I really struggled with and I kind of liked the outcome in the end but this is why there's no explanation of how I've done the background because I'm just sort of making it up and doing it um, the way that I feel it needs to be done. Um, so let me know in the comments below if you like it because it really was a struggle for me and it's something that I really need to work on which I'm really excited about doing more backgrounds for my pieces in the future. So stick around to the end of the video for the final result with the full background. So what I've done is just gone in with some tracing paper and put a mask over the pan pastel because if you do rub it it will come off straight away. So I've just cut it to size and put it here so that I don't wreck any of the background that I've already put down. So this reference photo is one that I downloaded from Unsplash. So getting started doing the eye, I started by lightly outlining the outline with some of the blue, orange and dark sepia colors and went in with the Holbein soft white pencil into the highlights just so that they preserve them and stay nice and waxy and white. So because I wanted this eye to be really nice and bright, I went in with a base layer of the light cadmium yellow and then started to work in some of the cadmium orange and orange glaze. After I did a couple of layers of that, I went in with the soft Holbein pencil and just blend all of that together so that it's nice and smooth and then you can go over with more of the orange and yellow colors to start to build up the tones. So I did this a couple of times, so putting in the orange and yellow and then going in with the Holbein and blending it all down and that will help give it that really shiny look. I then started to work in some of the deep red and also in the pupil I used a bit of the Helio Blue Reddish and then went over again with the dark sepia. So around the outline of the eye you can see it's very blue, so I used the Helio Blue Reddish and then some of the light phaleo blue is really that um, sort of sea beachy blue color. So one of the really good things about the soft Holbein pencil is that it is really waxy. So once you go over your color pencil with it, it blends all of the colors together and sort of fades them out a lot. So this is a really good tool to have for a shiny texture like this and even throughout the whole frog I'll be using it. So I really recommend getting a soft Holbein pencil or even a soft white Prismacolor pencil. They work really well as well. You can blend with your usual color uh, white color pencils but um, the polychromos isn't as waxy and also the luminance is a little bit harder as well and it doesn't fade it out as much as what the Holbein does so I do recommend using it for texture like this. So moving on to the green skin what I did was erase all of the graphite around the face because it is a very light colored frog so if you have any graphite it will sort of show through. Then I went in with the light cadmium yellow as a base and then started to build in the light green and then the grass green and in the darker sections the may green. So I did the same thing as in the eye. I went over with a couple of layers and then used the soft white Holbein pencil to blend everything down. 
and then start to get darker with the greens and go back over with the yellow to really bring out the yellow tone. In the very darker section I used some of the chromium green opaque and also then started to add in some of the helio blue reddish and the deep red and also adding some of the orange colors into the green colors sort of gives it a sort of shadowy effect and like a gray sort of scale so you can use that for your shadows as well remember to always use really light layers and gradually build up your colors and then in the highlight sections where there's sort of little white speckles you can sort of dot in your Holbein soft white pencil to make it seem like there's little bits of light hitting the skin and that will contrast with the darker colors that you've already put in there so for the skin underneath the neck and onto the belly, I used the warm grey one and then started to build in all of the colours really lightly that I already have in there. So I went in with the violet very, very lightly and added in at the very bottom the cadmium orange and also some of the green colours. And then I would go in again with the warm grey one and then build in a couple more colours. And then again, going over with the Holbein soft white pencil to blend it all together. So you just keep building up the tones in this way and I also added in some of the burnt sienna because there's sort of brownie tones in there as well along with the orange tones. But yeah it's just a matter of seeing where all of the shadows are and just lightly lightly building up all of the colors and then blending it back down with the warm gray one and the soft white Holbein pencil. So it got to this point of the frog and then I was pretty happy with how it was going and then I started to add in some of the blue of the legs and that and then you have a look back and you can see that it needs to go a lot darker under the chin. So it's better to go in lighter with your colors and then have to go back over and build things up rather than going in too dark and then having to make the whole piece a lot darker because you need to match the right tones all over the whole thing. So for the blue sections I went in with a light layer of the warm grey one then used the light phaleo blue and also the helio blue reddish. To contrast some of that I also went into the shadows with some of the violet and burnt sienna and also the dark sepia. Then under the belly I used a lot of the orange and yellow tones because they were depicted in there and then it was just a matter of going through and doing sort of piece by piece and I started to complete like toe by toe and little bits of legs because they're sort of everywhere in the photo so I just went in in little sections and started to build up the colors. When it came to the feet I went in with a light layer of the warm grey one and then the cadmium orange, orange glaze, the light cadmium yellow as well and then in the darker sections I also went in with the helio blue reddish and the violet so always doing your shadows with the sort of same darker colors that you have in the piece rather than going in with browns or dark sepia or black because it will make it sort of look flat Whereas if you use some of your complementary colors, they'll work well together and make the piece come together as a whole. Moving on to the underside of the body and the back legs, this is where you need to start paying attention to all of the shadows and making sure you're getting the lighter and darker tones in the right places because this is what's going to make it feel like certain legs and feet are sitting further back than the sort of lighter sections you've put on the top of the frog. So I use the same process again which is going in with the darker colors and then blending with the white Holbein pencil. This just makes it nice and smooth and look like it's shiny skin on the frog. For the underbelly part I did use some of the orange and the violet and then went in with the burnt sienna and dark sepia to really darken up the different sections. So for the little bit of branch or leaf that we've got here, went in with the light green, warm gray one and started to build up the darker green tones like the grass green, may green, chromium green opaque. And then after a couple of layers, I went in with my finesse blender pen and blended all of those colors together. Then once that dries, you go in with the darker colors and the medium tone colors and start to brighten it up and put in all of the little details that you can see in the end. And I also did go in with the white Holbein pencil for some of the light highlights. So putting in those darker and lighter tones is what makes it seem 3D and makes the stick seem round. So finally all of the colors on the frog are done so this is when we step back overnight 
have a look and assess and see where things need to go darker. So you can see I'm adding more colors to the under the chin and at the bottom of the legs just to make everything a little bit more prominent and you can add in some more white colors in the highlights to make everything sort of pop. So finally it's time to take off all of the tracing paper and see what it looks like. So remember as I said before it is one of the first pieces that I've done with a background like this so I would really like some feedback and any advice that anyone has for using pan pastels. So what I've decided now is I'll just add some more colours. I really wanted to add a little bit of orange to the background and a little bit of darker colours in the corners and maybe bring out some of the white bits and there were some sections that the pastel wasn't touching the pencil around the frog so I just had to go in and blend that a little bit more. So now it's time to take off the tape and these are the final beauty shots of this frog. I really hope that you like this video. Remember to give me a like and subscribe. Check me out on Etsy and Instagram and I'll see you in the next video. Keep drawing guys. Bye.